In this first set of night shots, the first thing you'll notice is the Pixel 4 shoots warm. That is, you'll see a yellowish orange tinge on the Pixel 4. Now, remember this because it'll come back again. For better or worse, it'll come back again. Otherwise, the Pixel 4 is a better shot with a bit more clarity overall. While you can't really tell as much from a glance at 100% crop, it's a lot more apparent. Less background noise, more detail in dark areas, with some smoothing and overexposure on the Pixel 4, but overall the better shot. And with night sight turned on, well, game over iPhone SE, the proof is in the pudding. That's such a cliche statement. <laughs> So let's continue on about this warm shooting the Pixel 4 does. It's something that happens a lot when it comes to streetlights in Chicago, and that's because a lot of neighborhoods still shine a dull yellow orange that seems to accentuate itself with the Pixel 4. Again, the Pixel 4 retains detail much better than the iPhone SE can offer, but the warm shot leaves a bit to be desired. You'll see that night sight completely changes the white balance though, so be aware. And here's one last set of shots to drive my point home. The shot is so yellow here that you can't even tell this building right here is actually painted yellow. Remember to shoot with night sight if you can when you're facing these kinds of lighting conditions. Obviously it's not that yellow as the iPhone SE has learned to properly keep the white balance intact. Thank god for night sight though, right? Here you'll see the Pixel 4 has more of a balanced shot. The iPhone SE tries to brighten the entire scene again while the Pixel 4 keeps things dark where they need to be without overdoing it. In this alleyway, you get a good contrast of dark in the foreground and bright in the back. The Pixel 4 overexposes a bit with the streetlights in the back, but it's not awful. I still think both came out decent. With night sight though, this night shot isn't so much of a night shot anymore. It's just too bright in the back, if you ask me. Notice here how the iPhone SE tries to brighten up everything again. It's not bad, but on a closer inspection, you can pick out the inaccuracies on the frame of lights here, on the far left as well. At 100% crowd, the Pixel 4 keeps the neon under control just a tad bit more, but for some reason, it loses its highlights over here, where the iPhone SE is more legible. You can see how much background noise the iPhone SE exhibits, as well as overexposure on this neon sign. And again, on this frame of lights I had mentioned earlier. Okay, so the Pixel 4 here maintains its lighting balance by not overexposing the Stella Artois or Blue Moon neon sign. It's not perfect, but it's better than what the iPhone SE offers. And in this last set, both are decent shots, but the clarity again goes to the Pixel 4 with a warmer tinge. And with Night Sight, you have quite the clear shot here, a tad bright, but it's visually appealing. Here's a quick rundown of video at night. Now, don't take this as gospel because it's just one quick scene. You'll see the Pixel 4 overexposes the street light while the iPhone SE really tries to brighten up the entire shot, again, in an otherwise dark parking lot in Chicago. The yellow building is way more pronounced on the Pixel 4, just really contrasty, really rich yellow here, which also offers deeper shadows and more contrast, making it hard to put a face on me at all. I don't mind it though, since it's night and to be expected, but when flipped here, the Pixel 4 really tries to brighten up the entire scene where the iPhone SE is the more realistic shot, the one that I prefer, and here again, I prefer the iPhone SE's more natural scene. I will say when it comes to video stabilization, just like my previous video, the Pixel 4 is the hands down winner. That's something that's sorely lacking on the iPhone SE. I mean, this is the second time in a row now that I'm seeing this. I do prefer the Pixel 4's video quality down this alley though. I just wasn't too keen with some of the other yellowish shots around this area. Shooting with the iPhone SE at night was actually the photo comparison I was looking forward to the most because I already knew that the iPhone SE was gonna do decent or fairly well during the day, which it did. Especially compared to my Pixel 4, it didn't edge out the Pixel 4. The Pixel 4 was still the better shooter during the day and at night, the Pixel 4 is still the better shooter, if, if not by even more. But the iPhone SE still did 
pretty decent, especially at a $400 price point. And for the most part, for a lot of people who are probably looking to buy an iPhone at this price, they're going to get a good camera out of it. Most of the time, they're just going to be posting things on social media or sharing a photo, you know, over a text or whatever. And I don't think most people are going to be pixel peeping, right? They're not going to be looking for those like inaccuracies or those small discrepancies. That's something that I do because one, I just enjoy comparing camera phones and, you know, kind of giving an opinion on what I think is better than the other. That's just something I do. Most people, they're not in that realm. Most people, they just want to take a shot, post it on social media and be done with it and move on. And I totally get that. Totally understand that. But does that mean the Pixel 4 is perfect? No. By, by no stretch of the imagination is the Pixel 4 perfect. One, it, it tends to overexpose a lot more, at least here versus the iPhone SE. And I'm pretty sure that's something that I've explained in my past camera comparisons with the iPhone 11 Pro. And obviously the iPhone 11 Pro, I've said this before, is the better camera phone at night versus the Pixel 4. And I think in, in a lot of cases also during the day, the iPhone 11 Pro has been my main camera phone ever since it came out, ever since I initially tested it with the Pixel 4. The Pixel 4 also has a tendency to shoot really warm. And you know, those scenes where it's really yellow or orange, that's not something that the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 11 Pro or my iPhone SE has given me issues with. For the most part, with those, I can just shoot and I'll usually get a correct white balance. I don't always get that with the Pixel 4 and having to decide, should I shoot with night sight on or shoot with it off? That's kind of a weird situation to be in. And if, if you end up having to shoot it with night sight, then you better have a really steady hand or your subject better be standing still at night because that's going to be an issue. And even though the iPhone SE does really good during the day and the night and even shoots video in the day and night with good like color. The, the one thing that bothered me the most though with the iPhone SE is its video stabilization. That is something that I feel like you shouldn't be able to get away with in 2020 for an iPhone. Yes, I know it's $400, but if you're gonna tout that it has great video capabilities, which I'm, you know, it does, but video stabilization is something that they could have improved upon. And maybe because it's using, you know, iPhone 8 optics or whatever. I don't know exactly what camera's in there. But um, I think that is such a sore spot that I wish they didn't neglect that. And my final recommendation here is if you're looking for a good camera phone at the $400 price point, the iPhone SE is going to give it to you. It's going to give it to you. Whether it's a day shot or a night shot, or even some of the portrait shots, they're not the best, but you're still gonna get a really good camera. In terms of video, yeah, it's gonna be good too. Just be prepared to either put it on a tripod, or if you're gonna be panning, you're gonna be panning really slow, or you're gonna be walking really slow. It's not something that you're gonna be using to move around too often because you're gonna see, you know, those video stabilization issues. Now, before I go, if you like this video, please consider supporting me on YouTube. I enabled a YouTube membership uh, recently and for as little as 99 cents a month. Uh, so more supporting me in that way will get your name in the intros and outros of all of my live streams. Also, uh, you get a badge next to your name when you uh, chat in live stream or you comment on any of my videos you get a little red Chicago star Which I think is pretty fucking cool if you ask me uh, And then there are other tiers you can for five dollars a month. There's like a private uh, Access to my discord and then at ten dollars a month You'll get to see videos like this earlier before anyone else and then there are other higher tiers Which I don't know if anyone's ever gonna do but I put them there anyway just in case and um, That's it uh, you know, supporting me, you can click the join button or you can just go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join and uh, I'll leave it at that. So hopefully this video was informative and uh, hopefully a little entertaining as well. Have a good one guys. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>